Hi, I'm David Muxler, and this is the start the session video for session for O5A debugging module M2. Before we get started, just wanted to show you a couple of tricks. First, if you want to close all your windows up there, right click on them, close all. Second, if you want to get rid of this part over here, all you do is click on the little thing there that makes it go away. Click on it to make it come back. Sometimes you accidentally make it go away, so I want you to know that if you click over there, that's how you get it back. All right, so we're working on M2. The idea to this exercise is that it has a bunch of functions here that are broken. And the goal of M2 is to help you with the error messages that are produced. It's important that you resist the urge to fiddle with code until it works. The whole point is to get used to error messages. Now these should produce the same pictures, the same pictures here that M1 produced. And so what we'll do is we'll work through them one by one. The idea is that you run it, see and understand the error message, fix the error. If you don't aren't able to fix it in 30 seconds or so, then you continue the video and see my solution. So you're always pausing the video after you run it, trying to fix the error. And then if you don't see it quickly, running the video to see to learn what that error means and how you deal with it. All right, let's get going. Here is, I'm running it here. And so it crashed. I always look at the bottom down here and work my way up to the first one that is in the tool that I'm working in. So this is in uh, 05A M2. So I click on that and that brings me to the line that is busted. Now my pie charm gives me some help. It shows warning messages here that in fact are quite good. Yours might or might not depending on how it's set up. If yours doesn't do warning messages, no worries. You'll just see how it goes. And keep in mind that these yellow, whatever color they are for you, are indeed warning messages. That's not necessarily that they're bugs and not necessarily that the bugs is there, but they often warn and here are warning of things that are not right. All right, you should pause the video now, look at that error message and see if you can fix this first error. So let's see here. This one says circle object has no attribute attach. That's very clear. It means that there's the word attach. There it is. And the object in front of it. So either this object is not in fact a circle with a capital C or circles don't in fact have a method named attach. That message must mean that. So if you see something object has no attribute something, you look for the something, you look for the object in front of it. One or the other is wrong. So I'm going to retype my dot and I see, oh, it isn't attach, it's attached to. So I let it type it for me and run again. I've got a new error message now. Again, absorb that error message. Point object is not callable. Click on the bottom line so that you see where things broke. It's the next line right there. And then pause the video right now and see if you can fix it. If you don't see how the fix is in 30 seconds or so, then resume the video. Alrighty, I'm assuming that you're back. Here is the message. We have point object is not callable. Callable, to call a function means parentheses. So somewhere on here there are parentheses and the object in front of it, the thing in front of the parentheses, is not something that one can call a function on. So either this part here is screwed up or as here, the parentheses are wrong. We just want the circle's center. Center is a noun, not a verb, so it has no parentheses after it. It's a thing, a characteristic of a circle, not a uh, verb, not a, a, a method to be called. I'm going to run, and I'll get my next error message here. Circle object has no attribute r. Again, I click on the blue to get to the thing. I see the r there. Pause the video and fix it. Probably you saw right away that that's just radius instead of R. I'm going to run for the next one. Another error message. Circle has no area uh, attribute attached. You already know how to fix it, so I'm just going to move right along there. I'll let it type for me. Whenever possible, let it type things. 
And circle object has no attribute draw. Ah, now here's a different one. This one's breaking inside rows graphics here, inside rows graphics. So we work our way up until we see the lowest one that is not inside rows graphics. So this one here, not in rows graphics. See, this one is, this one's not. So we click on the one that's not. That's not necessarily the line that is wrong, but it's the place at which the code entered rows graphics and later broke. Now, this one doesn't necessarily, well, it's just hard to say what this is. Circle object has no attribute draw. So something's wrong with the graphics of this. And hopefully what you see is you can take a circle, you can attach it, but you don't attach it to a circle, you attach it to a window. So I hope you saw that one yourself. Here's another one. Uh, I think our last one here, circle object has no attribute render. Pause the video briefly and fix that. Hopefully you saw that that's the same thing we just saw a moment ago. It isn't a circle that renders. It is the window that renders. And I think that we'll have number one looking like the picture. So we're good on number one. Move on to number two. Click here and it breaks. By the way, of course, if you have questions about any of the ones in here, please raise those questions with uh, a student assistant or your instructor. Anyhow, let's see here. So int object has no attribute clone. Again, it died in rows graphics, in rows graphics. So we work our way up to the, first, to the lowest one that is not in rows graphics. Here it is. Take a moment and see if you can fix it, but just a moment. This message almost always, int object has no clone. When that breaks in rows graphics, that's typically because it's trying to make a point, the point at XY here, and it's missed some parentheses. So sometimes people do things like this, which isn't quite right. What they need is to make it an RG point object. Points is not the same thing as two things in parentheses. Points have colors and things like that. Now I've not yet finished fixing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this here and run it a bit more. When I run, I now see that what I get over here is missing radius. So to make a circle, I need to do that and make a radius. So I'm gonna type radius, making a mistake, making a mistake, mind you. So you wanna wait for me here. I run it. Oh, it was red. There is no such thing as radius up here. It's just this thing here. I was supposed to make one radius 33, radius 33. All righty, let's run it again. Stop my previous run there. And here is broken two. Looks like it's working right. Looking like it's working right. So I'm going to move right on to broken three. Broken three breaks here with a different message. Take a moment and try to read that message. Missing one required positional argument, a window or canvas. Bet you can do that one. Missing, oh, this is a tougher one. Much tougher one, much tougher. I'll give you a hint, it has something to do with that part there. Pause the video and see what you can do. And, but don't spend more than a minute on this because this one's tricky. Alrighty, hopefully you paused the video and had time to give a stab at that. The problem here does not construct a line. There's no, after the word line with a capital L, after the, any class name, you'll always have a parenthesis. That's because this is referring to the class line, not a particular line. For example, if you have the chair class, if you have a particular chair, you can sit in, sit in it. So the sit to sit in makes sense for a particular chair, but doing sit in to the chair class makes no sense. Attaching to the category of thing, to the class of thing, to the kind of thing line makes no sense. It's this particular one. Now here the error appears on the previous line. This correctly constructed a line, but we forgot to give it a name. Now we use that name for that particular line that is to use the attach to. Make certain you're real clear on that because that's a big issue. There's a strong difference between RG line being constructed, given a name, we traditionally use lower cases, and using that name, 
versus trying to do something with RG line as a class. To repeat, you'll after typing a class name like line with a capital L, you'll never want to type a dot. Never. There are notations that work with typing a dot, but you're never going to want to do them. All right, let's run again to this one. And it looks like this is running and running successfully. Looks like I got this one nailed here. All right, so we're on number four, broken four. Again, it broke in Rose Graphics, so we work up. Click on the one that's not in Rose Graphics, broke here. Int object has no attribute clone. Uh, this is a little different version of there. It's a similar idea. It's saying that you're trying to construct something wrong. Take a moment, see what you can do, and then resume the video. Let's see, if we do a line, here's another little trick. If you select line and you go up to, uh, let's see, I think it's under under view, under the view menu. If you select a class and go to the view menu and see it's quick documentation, that pops up a quick documentation and it shows you that you need a start and an end point. You can even click on there and go on to the full documentation if you want and see it all there. So that was view quick documentation. It's one way to get to the documentation. Anyhow, we need to start an endpoint, so we need to have an endpoint here. Uh, let's see, we're working on broken four. So, oh, but we don't want a line anyhow. We're to draw a circle, draw us a Greenfield circle. So, problem wasn't that at all. It was that we were supposed to draw a circle. Circles do have a point and a radius. So, there are many ways to get this message down here. You've seen several in these exercises now. So there we are, that uh, produced, let's see here, let's let it work its way through broken three, and now we're at broken four and we get the right result. So I think we're good with broken four. Broken five, uh, this one here breaks on that line right there. Now this one has is interesting. You're gonna see something surprising here perhaps. I'll pause the video, see if you can fix the error or errors on this line and then after a little bit, once you either fix it or don't have any thoughts, resume the video. Circle object has no attribute fill color. Circle has no fill color. So this message is unequivocal. You can, can you don't know why it's happening, but when you see has no attribute such and such, you go find the such and such, it's very easy, and either the thing in front of it is wrong or the thing there is wrong. No other choices. So if this is in fact a circle object, and we're trying to do a circle, and it says uh, what well, we draw the circle, but with the square having the same outline color as the fill color of the circle. So we're trying to get the fill color of the circle. Perhaps we misspelled it. We retype the dot, type F. There it is, but it typed the rest. Now I'm going to continue. I'm not done yet, but I'm going to continue running. And you're going to see something a little tougher to spot here. Uh, this is a place where PyCharm may be a little surprising to you. Here we are. So we were supposed to make the square have the same outline color as the fill color of the circle. So the code did not break. But the square's outline color is not that pink color. That's because, and my PyCharm is giving me a clue here with the spelling error here, but that's not much of a clue. If you try to do something dot something and set it equal to something, set it to give it a value, if this thing is not spelled right, but this thing is okay, it just creates a new one of this thing. So this line creates a square outline color, spelled wrong, that has nothing to do with the square's real outline color spelled differently. Well, that's a tough one to spot, but there we go. So I'm going to rerun here and we'll see that this will give the right uh, square, the square with the pinkish outline. And there it is. Again, if you have questions on any of these, please, please just bring it up with your student assistant or your instructor. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next one. The next one is got an error over here. It says 
total.x equal total.x. Well, let's go to the line of code. Here's the line that broke. Int object has no attribute x. That is, again, unequivocal. There's an object, an attribute x. So we look for the dot x. The thing in front of it is apparently an int object. Either it's wrong or the x is wrong. It's no other choice. Well, this is trying to add up a bunch of things. No dot x is involved in here. We're just trying to have total be a number. So there we go. I'm going to run it. And we'll see whether we get broken six to work out right or not. And so in just a moment, here we are, broken six. We check our test, always check our test. The correct result is 1.833 approximately. Actual one point, good, yep. 5.18 something, five point, yep, looks like it's good. Looks like it could. So we could have had another error there, uh, a, a logic error. And that's what M3 is going to investigate not here. So that's the end of the O5A debugging M2, which focused on trying to understand error messages when code breaks and what to do with it. Put those into your repertoire.